Hey everyone, today I'll be reviewing my current running shoe that I have. These are the Under Armour Charged Bandit 3s for women. The one I have here is this kind of aqua blue tone. There are various different colors that you can pick up, also depending on the size and also the gender of the shoes that you pick up. The original retail price for these were about $79, but I was able to pick them up for around half that price. So I thought it was a pretty good deal and I was in the market for a new pair of running shoes anyways. They look really stylish from the product listing and in person they look even better. Generally, because I have pretty low arches, almost flat feet, Under Armour tends to be the best brand of running shoes for me. They have very nice breathable design, comfortable, and also has really great grip. And this one is no exception. So first talking about the overall design, it is very modern. It has a nice mesh, of course, in the toe area, and the fabric is pretty seamless. It goes all the way to near your heel area, where the color gets progressively darker. And the same gradient can be seen also in the midsole area, which is a really nice design touch. There are also some reflective pieces found near the top and also at the heel of the shoe for better visibility the shoelace here of choice is more of the rounded design so if you wanted to switch these out for the flat ones you can but from using them in the past few months they seem to be able to stay in place really well so i just kept them Underneath those laces is probably the most polarizing thing about the shoe, and that's the tongue design. Unlike other shoes that I've tried in the past, the tongue remains fairly independent from the rest of the shoe, and that means it's meant to wrap around your foot better. But from my experience, when I want to quickly slip on these shoes, that means that sometimes the edges get curled up when it should be sitting flush, so I have to take a little bit more time to make sure the edges straighten up before I start running in them. At first I found this really irritating because I had to keep on doing this every single time I put on the shoe, but after the first three times of me wearing them after a, a good run, I found that it started to mold to my feet, so I guess this is kind of the break-in period for the tongue of the shoe. Kind of never heard of that before, but I think that's really the case with these shoes. Though there has been quite a few complaints from the reviews I've seen about it, so I can imagine that the next iteration of it will not have this kind of design. Another thing that I would hope that they would reconsider for the next design is the heel area. The heel cup is kind of abruptly by itself, unlike other shoes that kind of seamlessly sew into the rest of the body of the shoe, for example my Nikes here. And then the mesh part of the uh, heel cup, which of course needs to be able to conform to your actual heel, is a little bit higher than other shoes. So then when you keep on slipping in and out of these shoes, it causes that part to depress a lot more, which means that part loses its structural element. So you have to be constantly readjusted after you slip in these shoes. Of course, those two things I just mentioned, the tongue and also the heel cup, are elements that prevent the shoe from being an easy slip on and off, which is not a deal breaker in my opinion. But moving on to the rest of the design, it has a slightly thicker midsole than my other shoe that I had, so I did notice the extra height when I wore these. This also means that it's a good shoe for long distance endurance type running because it will provide more support over a longer period of time. As with all running shoes, the midsole will taper up to a point and then you can see there's an extra waterproofing element there at the toe area too. But by far my favorite element of the shoe is its high abrasion rubber here on the bottom. You can see the darker patches of blue are the grippier pieces of rubber which allow me to easily do wall stretches by firmly mounting my foot against the wall without any slippage. These strategically placed grippier pieces of rubber on the heel area to absorb impact and also um, at the footbed allows for a really seamless heel to toe transition when walking and running. So I think the exterior of the shoe, the outsole, the overall uppers are a highlight of the shoe. The disappointment lies with the inside. If you take a look at the insole of my left shoe, you can see that the Under Armour logo has already started peeling off. And this already started after about two runs of approximately three miles each. So I think this is way too early for something like that to be coming off. You see there's not an issue on the right shoe, so it may just be in a defective unit on my part. But honestly, at a retail price of about $80, I kind of would have expected this to be a little bit better in terms of quality control. And as crowded as the running shoe market is, I feel like this shoe definitely came short of my expectations. 
in the unconventional toe and heel cup design, which really didn't do Under Armour any favors for this particular model. So unless you find these shoes at a sub $40 price, I can't exactly recommend this over other running shoes. But there were some strong points of this shoe as well that prevented me from just simply returning them and that would be the awesome snug fit, the shock absorption of the midsole and the grippy outsole. These specific features allowed me to run farther and faster than I had ever before with my old running shoes, which is still a huge plus in my book even though this is not the most ideal shoe.